in the recent past there has been a lot of push towards microservices based architectures from a developer standpoint we can understand the microservices architecture and then implement them as and when we require however we need to also think about how do we navigate between these microservices when something goes wrong and how can i get immediate and instant feedback from these microservices in a seamless and reliable fashion that's where microservices observability is of prime importance if you're already using microservices and if you're using any observability tools do mention that in the comment section below so if people are watching this video can take a look at the comment section and understand what are the different tools which people are using and which one is more popular among developers i'll be sharing different tools which are available out there in the industry which are tagged under the cncf foundation also i'll be mentioning some of the tools which i had used for observing microservices now let's try to understand observability right from the basics let's get started everything fails all the time we have heard this quote from the cto of amazon web services so he has been quoting this so that we all take this particular quote seriously and work towards making our microservices self sustaining and reactive towards failure events in order to understand observability if you go to wikipedia this is the definition which you get in control theory observability is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from the knowledge of its external outputs it's a complicated definition forget this definition for a second to split the word observability let's split it into observe and the ability the general use case of an observability used in our day to day life is a cctv camera most of our flat systems office spaces use this particular device to understand what's happening within that particular environment this is a classic example of an observability use case the webcam observes what's happening within the environment however we are not going to look at the webcam until or unless there is a problem or we want to look at what happened during a time frame it's exactly the same we are going to do for our processes which are running in production if you want me to relate observability to a real life use case of a human imagine the diagnosis which we go through in a hospital the doctor diagnoses our body to identify if there is any symptom or if there is any problem within our body observability is something similar but the only thing is we are just doing it for our microservices in a real case of a human you cannot keep on plugging devices into our body and then we cannot walk throughout the day instead we do the diagnosis whenever there is a symptom but in the case of our deployments we cannot create observability only when there is an issue because we are not going to be happy if something fails in production that's when we need to be more smart in terms of creating a real time system which can get feedback from the microservices so now if you look at the definition again there are two terms which we need to understand the internal states and the external output internal states are the ones which are maintained within your process which is not exposed outside however you need to make sure what can be exposed and what cannot be exposed so that the external outputs define what is your internal state if we relate this to the example which i said earlier about the diagnosis we go to a doctor only when there is a symptom so that symptom is nothing but the external output there is an internal problem because of which the symptom was exposed and that's nothing but the internal state so if there is a problem within an application you're going to see that as an external output but your internal state decides that and that's what observability is all about we need to measure this internal state and the external output based on which we can take actions on that particular microservice so what does the observability constitute so there are three major pillars of observability the first one is the metrics usually we call this as metrics or monitoring we use the stats around that particular microservice to understand what happened during a particular point in time the next one is the logs logs are obviously helpful if you're writing applications which are running in production you know how valuable these logs are so we need to have logs as well to comprehend the analysis on what's happening within your microservice and the final one is how do i trace 
my request across microservices. So with greater responsibility comes more power. The same applies to microservices. When you have multiple microservices, you have multiple workflow requests which are traversing across different service calls and you need to trace them much productively. So you need to have a way to trace a request across microservices. If you have not taken a look at my distributed tracing video on Spring Cloud Sleuth, I think which I made three years ago, I guess, do take a look at it. That's one way of implementing distributed tracing for observing within your microservice. These are the major pillars of observability. However, there is one more pillar which got recently introduced and Netflix being the pioneer in the cloud space, they created the chaos engineering experiments. Even chaos engineering can be included as a part of the observability paradigm. So what does chaos engineering mean? There is an exclusive video on chaos engineering. You can take a look at it, but I will just brief it for your reference in this video. Imagine that you have a steady state of your application. You want to create a hypothesis around what can go wrong. And you're going to design that particular experiment saying, if this happens, this is what I expect my application to behave with and you're going to design the experiment and then come up with learnings as a part of the experiment and you're going to use those results to fix bugs or fix gaps in your systems so basically let's say one of the service goes down in production so what happens so that's what chaos engineering helps us in so it identifies gaps and it helps us in fixing our gaps within the system how does it apply to microservices observability is because if you are not able to identify an issue with these three pillars, then that itself is a gap. When there is a chaos experiment happening, if you're not having enough observable parameters to identify what's happening within the system, then that itself is a red flag. So you're going to use chaos experiment to do experiment within your microservices and use the monitoring tools, logging tools and the traceability tools to identify how can I navigate within my services and then identify issues. Most of your thinking, that these terms are something which I already have heard about. What is something new about it? Most of us are working in the cloud environment these days. And most of us have the freedom to scale up and scale down. And because of this, we were able to churn out more applications into production and we had more microservices running in the cloud native space. Now, if you look at a job of a support engineer, he doesn't know what's happening within the microservices, but he needs necessary tools like the monitoring tools, the logging tools, and the log tracing capabilities to identify what's happening within these microservices. And that's where observability comes into picture. So if you're in any cloud provider or if you're in any on-prem based system, which could be a bare metal or a VM, you definitely need the monitoring, logging and the tracing tools. Earlier, it was very easy because there was only one machine, but now with the cloud native space, your microservices are running in different machines and it can go to different, different machines at different point in time. So you need to have a central place where you can monitor log and then trace your applications logs and the requests so that you can get instant feedbacks and have less time to react when something goes wrong. And how do we expose these issues? That's where the chaos engineering experiments comes into picture. If let's say one of the servers goes down, you will be able to get alerts using the monitoring system based on the observable factor which had been configured for that particular microservice. And since there are no logs, you will be able to identify that from microservice 2 to microservice 3, there was nothing happening. So there was some failback which has happened in the microservices 2 space. And I can use tracing for tracking all these requests and identify which microservice went down. Obviously, there are self-healing capabilities in the cloud native space these days. And obviously, your microservice is going to come up. But the monitoring tool, the logging tool and the tracing tool helps you in identifying what happened during that particular point in time and how did your system react to it. This way, all these four pillars play a key role in creating a reactive environment for your microservices which are running in production. This is what microservices observability is all about. Now looking at the different tools which are available in the industry, CNCF has a landscape page which is landscape.cncf.io. They have different categories by which the tools have been split. So I have taken the observability and the analysis part which covers all our four key pillars. If you look at it, the first part is the monitoring bit or the metrics we called it. There are different tools in the industry right now which are available. For example, Amazon CloudWatch if you're using AWS. There is something called AppDynamics. So I have used Amazon CloudWatch. I have used AppDynamics. I have used Dynatrace. If you have used any of these tools, do let us know in the comment section below. I found Datadog to be much 
simpler and they have a very good ui dynatrace was a bit heavy and it, i think it comes with the cost again comparatively to the other tools recently i have tried the google stack driver which also gives majority of what the other tools provide but i have never created a custom dashboard using stack driver but i have done that using datadog and dynatrace and dynatrace provides you a lot of in-depth details datadog provides you majority of it but with the less cost grafana is another ui based solution where you can see graphs for your time series data there are a lot of other projects if you have uh, if you take a look at it i have also used the influx data which is the time series database which is used by Prometheus. If you click on any of these tools, it shows up what kind of project it is. So if you look at Thanos, Thanos is a project which is incubating in the CNCF project. And that's why it shows up here who is funding and what foundation is it a part of. For example, Prometheus again is a CNCF project. Influx is not a CNCF project, but it is an Influx data company's project. So that's what it shows. If you click on it, it shows up who owns it, what kind of project it is, whether it is uh, whether it is open sourced or closed source or what kind of license it owns. Let's go to Amazon and let's check what is that. If you look at it, it's not open source and that's what it, it is mentioned. But this UI provides you a way to identify different tools and which category they fall into. Coming to the next one, which is the logging. There are different logging service providers. I have used Elastic. I have used FluentD. So this FluentD is a part of CNCF now. I have used FluentD for pushing logs into a Kafka topic out of containers. There are also different products like Logstash, Splunk, Sumo Logic, etc. I have used Splunk very heavily. Recently, Grafana has introduced something called Grafana Loki, which is similar to Splunk. The next one is the log tracing. I have used Spring Cloud Sleuth for log tracing. There is a product called Ager, but that is also now under the CNCF Foundation, which is open source. You can try that out. Open tracing is the new specification for the logging for log tracing. But personally, I have used Spring Cloud Sleuth and then Zipkin. So Spring Cloud Sleuth was part of Pivotal and now VMware acquired it. It's completely open sourced. You would have seen my videos on Spring Cloud Sleuth for distributed tracing. If you have not, do take a look at it. And finally, for the chaos engineering experiments, it's a pretty new area and there are very less tools right now. So Gremlin is a company which came out of Netflix and that's the logo which you would have seen here. So Litmus is another product. There are a lot of other open source projects which are out there, but there is nothing in the CNCF incubation yet. I'll definitely want to try one of this product in the future. Do let me know if you are interested in any one of them. I can give that a try. To summarize, observability is all about monitoring, logging, tracing, and identifying how our systems are able to react if there is a failure. And are we able to immediately trace if there is any bug or if there is any issue and with multiple microservices it's going to be a daunting task if you don't have any of these tools for your observability as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much <music>